it's been almost a month of me working on this video, so I really hope it turned out well. <sighs> nice to be back inside out of the wind. So, dandelions are one of the few plants that are entirely edible. The leaves are edible, the roots are edible, the blossoms are edible. I think even the seeds are edible. But you gotta do a lot of cleaning with these guys. So, first, outside before you even get into the house, get off as much dirt as possible. You don't want big rocks or anything like that getting into your garbage disposal. So we're gonna separate out the leaves from the roots. So I'm just gonna take them up a little bit high on the stems. Now, what am I gonna do with these? Well, whatever I would do with spinach. Um, I find that it's got a, a bitter flavor, similar to arugula. So whatever you would do with arugula or spinach, um, you like spinach with a uh, sweet bacon salad dressing? Well, try dandelion with a sweet bacon salad dressing. You like arugula with um, a, a jerk chicken sandwich? Well, try dandelion with a jerk chicken sandwich. This is just one plant here that has given me all of these leaves. Okay, so I have rinsed off all of these leaves. Now it's time for me to really look at each and every one and pick off any brown spots or separate out any that are looking a little bit worse for wear. Really look at these one at a time. Now, you can only do this if you never use weed killer in your yard. Uh, don't take these from next to your neighbor's yard because you don't know if they ended up using weed killer unless you've had a conversation with them saying, hey, I'd like to eat some dandelions, but I need to know if you use a weed killer in your yard because if you do, then I can't eat any that are along our fence line because you might poison me. Uh, that could be a weird conversation to have with some neighbors because some neighbors will be like, oh, cool, you can eat dandelions, and others would be, uh, why are you eating dandelions? So depending on how crazy you want to seem to your neighbors, you might want to have that conversation or just avoid it by not taking dandelions in there. Okay, I'm just gonna cut these like I would any green vegetable. So I'm gonna put it in a plastic uh, closed top container in my refrigerator. And then I'm gonna add these to scrambles like I would with uh, spinach. I will add them to baked things like quiches. Maybe toss it in with some pasta or just in a salad. I would say uh, a little bit of uh, lemon or vinegar on top of this, toss it with some cilantro or basil, some herbs added into it, maybe even cut it with a little bit of romaine lettuce. And if you do your own homegrown romaine, it's gonna have a bitter flavor too. So the bitter flavors of the dandelion and the homegrown romaine will kind of complement each other. You could even do uh, a thinly sliced cucumber and radish uh, in with this, and that would be a good complement, particularly with some rice wine vinegar and a little pinch of sugar. If you want to cut the bitterness, don't just add sugar, add sugar and some salt, and that combo will kind of keep the bitterness out of your dandelion salad. Okay, now it's time to take a look at these roots that we got. We need to wash these extremely well because they are super dirty. Clean the outside even more. Now some people actually like try to peel their dandelions like carrots, but I find that the skin is too um, woody to do that because it just kind of strips all apart and shreds. So 
I just cut the growth part from the top off and then all the little hairy roots, I knock those guys off. So if you can peel off the skin, it'll look like this, but you can only do that on the very biggest of roots. You kind of just give it a little bit of a slit and a peel, and then you can get it off. But unless you've got some really big roots, you can't really do this on the small ones. So those guys I'm just going to rip off, but I am going to peel these larger ones to see if that makes a difference. It's all rinsed and clean. I've got the big ones rinsed and peeled. I'm going to put them into roast. A little bit of foil on top. And once they're all roasted, uh, then we get to try some roasted dandelion root. I've heard that it's really good as a tea, so I might roast them and then dry them and then grind them and see how they are made up as a tea. Here's the dehydrated dandelion root, and I'm gonna kind of mash it up a bit in my mortar and pestle to make it easy to put into a tea ball. And if uh, this ends up being too strenuous, I always have a coffee grinder just in case. Oh, this is easy. They've become very brittle after the initial roasting and then just putting it on low. If you've got a dehydrator, a food dehydrator, you can use one of those. But if you don't have one of those, just set your oven to the lowest temperature. Usually it'll be 170 to 180 Fahrenheit. There. That should work pretty nicely. I'm gonna put it in a little teaspoon, ha ha ha, tea ball spoon. And uh, I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea. Okay. Here we go. Now we wait. <gasps> we have a comfy chair. We have the seven. 15 in the evening sun, it's time for some tea. Now, I tried this at five minutes, which is usually what I do for herbal teas and black teas, but um, I just wasn't getting much flavor out of it, so I gave it about double the time. And I know some people might ask, well, why didn't you just add more dandelion? Well, you see, once it's rehydrated, it really fills up this little tea ball. So maybe if I used one of my larger tea balls, I could have had more of an intense dandelion flavor. But after about 10 minutes, you can get a definite dandelion flavor with that dandelion bitter sap taste at the very end, but it's sort of mild, so I think with just even a half spoon of sugar, you wouldn't even really notice it. But then if I am going to sweeten this, maybe I want to up the dandelion flavor and add dandelion syrup. These are some of the blossoms that I picked from out in my yard. They were nice and full. And what we want to do is get the yellow part without any of the green. So you can split them open and kind of pluck them like a plucking a chicken. But nobody plucks their own chickens anymore, so why am I even using that analogy? Uh, other people like to use a scissors and they just snip the base off of the flower and then pull out the yellow part. Um, I don't like this as much because the very ends of those flowers where they're closest to the base is where the nectar is which is some natural sweetness. I kind of want to keep that. So I'm not as much of a fan of the scissors. Uh, I like to split them open with my fingers and then pull out the whole blossoms. But 
The scissors do make it a little bit faster for getting the yellow parts, so it's really up to you whether you want to do the split or the scissors. Okay, we're going to turn all of those dandelion blossoms that we've collected and tossed into the freezer into a dandelion syrup. What can you do with a dandelion syrup? Well, you can turn the dandelion syrup into a dandelion wine if you want to ferment it. You can turn a dandelion syrup into dandelion honey or dandelion jelly by adding pectin to it and cooking it down some more. So we're gonna be doing that with our dandelions. Um, the more dandelions you can pick, the stronger the dandelion flavor will be in your syrup. So I have a bunch and they've gotten slightly dehydrated in the freezer, that's just fine. Let's talk about the hardware and the software that we're gonna need hardware-wise. You're going to need some measuring cups, both a dry and a wet. You're going to want to have some bottles to put your syrup into that have been washed and sanitized. You're going to want to have a sparging bag or um, a really big tea bag. If you don't have something like this, you can use a strainer with some cheesecloth in it, but you're gonna have to you know, filter out the floating particles of dandelion blossoms. So that's why I like using a sparge bag better. You may want to uh, have a juicer for a lemon and a knife for that, cutting board, and of course, a large pot for boiling it on the stove. So that's all the hardware stuff, software. Of course, dandelion blossoms. You're gonna want sugar. You're gonna want water. You're gonna want some citric acid. I'm gonna be using a very sad looking lemon that needs to get juiced. And a little bit of a high proof alcohol such as vodka. I'm using Everclear. This is 190 proof. 100 proof is 50% alcohol, 50% water. So 190 proof is really close to 100% because 200 would be 100%. So we're looking at you know, a really high percentage of alcohol in there and that's mostly for the disinfecting properties. Even though I have washed these bottles, I just want to make sure that there's not anything in there that can infiltrate my syrup. Also, you might want to get some corn syrup or glucose syrup, some sort of inverted sugar to keep the sugar crystals from crystallizing. The lighter the color of your inverted sugar, the better because we're wanting the color of the dandelions to come out. Now, some people might add in a little bit of yellow food coloring to accentuate that, but I don't bother. Um, I find that the color that the dandelion gives it is fine enough, but you might find it a little bit dull looking or a little bit brown looking, something that the citric acid will help with. And if that's the case, just one or two drops of a yellow food coloring. I'm not gonna use any of that because I'm just gonna make the syrup. So let me juice the lemon. Now I don't want any of the pulp from this lemon to get in to the syrup, but I think I do want some of the zesty flavors. So peel of the lemon is gonna hang out in the sparging bag. It looks like I've got maybe a tablespoon and a half, possibly two tablespoons of lemon juice. I'm gonna add that into my four cups of water. And I'm gonna move this four cups of water into my pot. And bringing up the heat. Okay, so I'm going to move my sparging bag full of dandelions and a couple lemon peels also into my bag, just like a giant tea bag, and that's going to start warming up. I'm not adding the sugar yet, but I am going to talk about how much sugar you can put into water. So if you're making a regular simple syrup. You would do one cup to one cup. So one cup of water, one cup of sugar. Four cups of water, four cups of sugar. But when you heat up water, you can do something called super saturation. And that's where you put double the amount of sugar into the water. So that's what we're gonna do. 
instead of just four cups, there's gonna be eight cups of sugar. I've got more sugar waiting in the ready if I don't have enough in this. And then I'm probably gonna put about two tablespoons of light corn syrup in with that. But I'm not gonna do that quite yet because I want as much of the dandelion flavor to get infused into the water early. Once the sugar's in there, it'll be harder for the water to pull out the essence of the dandelion. So we're gonna let the dandelions come up to a boil, fully flavor the water. So now I'm gonna talk about this Everclear. Now I did wash these two bottles, put them in a high boil, cleaned them all up. But just in case, I'm gonna put a little dribble inside. I don't need more than that. That's probably maybe even just a quarter teaspoon in each. I'm going to clamp down. And I'm going to shake that alcohol all around the inside to disinfect. Now, is this going to leave a little residue of alcohol inside? Yep, but alcohol is a preservative it's not going to really change the flavor because I chose such a pure alcohol. Vodka is good for this. Everclear is good for this. Moonshine. And it's been unflavored. White Lightning. Um, a white dog whiskey would work, you know, before it's been aged. So any grain alcohol that's high enough proof to disinfect. And now that I have swizzled that around, I'm going to dribble what's left of the alcohol into the syrup pot. Why am I doing that? I don't know exactly. I've heard some people say that vodka or wine in a tomato sauce makes certain flavors of the tomato activate and the like. And I don't know if this is gonna make some of the flavors in the dandelions activate or not, but I figure it's worth a try, you know? So we're gonna let that work for a bit. I'm not seeing all the dandelions down in the water, so I'm gonna push them around a bit with my spoon. You know what? I think I might end up disinfecting a few more extra bottles and see if uh, see if I can get this more submerged so we can really get all the dandelion flavor. Okay. So to get the sparging bag fully submerged, I had to double my water. You can already see it's starting to get a slight yellow cast from the dandelions, which is good. I'm gonna bring this all the way up to a boil. Then I'm going to remove the dandelion blossoms. Then I'm gonna add my sugar. So as always, a watched pot never boils quickly. It'll boil eventually, but who cares for that? So I'm going to do a little bit of picking up. I'm going to uh, disinfect a couple more bottles just in case I need them because I've now doubled the volume of my liquid, which means I've got to double the amount of sugar. So now it's eight cups of water, which is going to be 16 cups of sugar. Man, that's a lot of sugar. I doubled everything. I'm doubling the lemon, so there goes another set of lemon peels and some more lemon juice just to keep the acidity up. You want it to be slightly acidic so that it has more lasting power and shelf life. And that also comes with it being super saturated with two parts sugar to one part water. But it does not have an infinite shelf life. You can get probably 
six to eight months before things might start going weird or cloudy inside your syrup. So just be aware of that. Don't, uh, don't think you can put this up and five years later it'll be, still be good. In six to eight months you've got to decide whether you're going to make it into wine, make it into jam, flavor cocktails with it, flavor lemonade with it. Mm, think of that. Dandelion flavored lemonade. They make lavender flavored lemonade. Why not dandelion? Maybe you want to put it on top of scones and have dandelion scones. Lots of possibilities. Okay, we've got a good boil going on now. You can hear it, so I'm gonna squeeze out this sparging bag. Now the longtime cooks who have heat deadened hands might use their hands to squeeze a sparging bag, but I'm just gonna use my spoon in the side of the pot to squeeze as much moisture out of this humongous tea bag as I possibly can. Now some people would have taken these dried dandelion blossoms and made a tea out of them, and I'm sure that is also absolutely delicious. It would probably accent the dandelion root nicely. Okay, now time to do our thing. I'm just gonna eyeball two tablespoons. That's about one. That's about two tablespoons of my inverted sugar. Dissolve that in. And now it's time for 16 cups. 16 candles. Okay, now that it's got that sugar in it, it can get up really extremely hot. So I'm going to put in my candy thermometer and watch it. And according to this candy thermometer, 230 degrees Fahrenheit or 110 Celsius is the syrup. So we're looking for that's 225, so around in there is what I'm looking for. I don't know if the camera's at a good enough angle to see this, but look at that sort of golden, already honey color that the dandelion is given this. So you can see why, if you made this into a jelly or thick syrup, it could be called dandelion honey. Well, all the sugar crystals are now dissolved. I'm going to kind of let this do its thing. I'm going to put my sugar syrups and anything I don't need away. Seconds, but see how foamy this has suddenly gotten? Should I have maybe gone to an even bigger pot? I'm starting to second guess myself. Yeah, when I doubled the recipe to get all of those dandelions down underneath the uh, liquid, I should probably have uh, doubled the size of my pot, which I have a bigger pot. If you don't, um, keep your recipe small or you're going to be battling with the boil monsters.
Okay, it is at temperature. I'm gonna keep it there for five minutes. These still have a slight remnant of the alcohol. Oh, and I forgot my hardware list. A clean funnel. This I have also uh, poured it over clear through. Now, slowly take your time. Take your syrup and pour it into your bottles. Look at that pretty golden color. This is why I don't think you really need to do any kind of artificial coloring with this. It comes out to such a nice soft yellow. And there you have it. That's uh, three different parts of the plant. We've got roasted roots, we've got cleaned and chopped greens, and we've got the blossoms into a syrup. But that's not really enough recipes yet. So I'm gonna have a third episode where um, if you thought my filming quality with the windstorm was bad, just wait till you see the I didn't actually film any of the things that I cooked video. Uh, so I'm going to do a vague reenactment, talk out the recipes, and then uh, post uh, pictures of the recipes that you can pause and copy. Yeah, that'll work. So third episode on Dandelions coming up. Thank you so much for joining me. Now part of this is to get the sugar to a certain, I don't know, thickness, viscosity, something that has to happen to the sugar crystals with the heat and the water to make it all dissolve in a, oh, there's a certain word. Uh, it's when a particle is fully dissolved in the water. Particle man, particle man. He's underwater, does he get wet? Does the water get him instead? Nobody knows, particle man.